Hello everyone, Craig Chamberlain here, Craig the Tech Teacher at craigthetechteacher.com. Today we're going to be going through another video in the Windows 8.1 series using this book, Windows 8.1, The Missing Manual. If you don't have this book yet, you might want to pick it up. Check it out in the video description below. I'm using it to go through this entire series and show you guys all the wonderful features of Windows 8 that people are afraid to tell you because it's not as bad as you might think. If you're not yet a patron and you like my show and you want to support it, you think I add value to the community in some way, check out the link below for the Patreon page where you can help support and grow the show as well as get a slew of benefits that come with being a patron, including VIP access to me, which is good stuff. Top patrons for this month are Jacob Williams with Wild Academy at wildacademy.com. Check him out for Ruby tutorials, as well as Brooke Chamberlain with Ashley Beige Photography. Great photography there. Make sure you check her out. And also, finally, Precision Electric, which is where I'm filming this for their wonderful, wonderful support um, of keeping the show going. And they offer industrial services as well as industrial electronic repair, uh, field services, retrofits, you name it. Check them out at precision-elect.com. Okay, let's get started. Now, we left off on the previous video, basic start menu stuff, right? But in this video, we're going to talk about customizing your start menu. And what's your start menu? This is your start menu, right? This is the Windows UI or the start, uh, the start screen, as we can call it. We can't really call it the start menu anymore because they give you this big, huge, massive screen to work with. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with this, so try to keep up with me. And remember, you might want to go back and uh, look over it again if you don't keep up with everything that I'm talking about. So we're going to start with adding app tiles. These little boxes on your screen are called app tiles. And the reason they're called app tiles is because they're mostly just apps. Because remember, this interface is meant for mobile develop uh, mobile software no, mobile hardware I'm sorry meant for mobile hardware such as touchscreen tablets and touchscreen laptops but it is unfortunately part of your desktop now uh, but there are some fun things about messing with it which you'll learn today now these apps can be rearranged but first we're gonna go to adding apps adding apps is extremely easy if I click this down arrow here I can add apps directly from this app list this is everything that's basically installed on my machine right now from an app standpoint. And if I scroll over here, there's more information as well and more apps I can use. Let's say I want the snipping tool on my main screen. I can right click on it and I can click pin to start. And there it is. It's like magic. So let's go back down here and see what else we have. Let's say we want to do Windows Media Player, right? No, nope. let's do Steps Recorder. How about that? And we'll say pin to start. And it, go ahead and it goes ahead and adds both of those to the start menu. Now let's say you want to add an app, but you don't, know, don't remember where it's at or you can't find it. Very easy to fix. Let's say I type in Windows Movie. And movie, movie, Windows Movie Maker isn't on here. Let's just do Calculator. How about that? And let's pin the calculator by right-clicking on it and pin to start. So you can actually do a search and pin directly from your search results as well which is a great feature, by the way. I'm a big fan of the Windows Search. If you haven't used it yet, make sure you use it. And finally, you can go to your traditional desktop and you can pin things from this as well just by right-clicking on them and clicking, you got it, pin to start. So let's pull it back up here and there it is. Pins it right to my start menu. So we can add app tiles from directly from the app list. We can add them from the search results and we can also add them directly from our traditional desktop. Now let's say I don't want the recycle bin on here. I changed my mind. Unpinning them is a lot easier than actually pinning them, or just as easy. If I right click on it, I can click unpin from start and boom, it goes away. It's like magic. Now let's do some rearranging here. Let's say I want the snipping tool and screen steps recorder to be my tools. And let's get this calculator out of the way. So I click and hold on my mouse button and I drag it to the left and I drop it where I'd like to have it. And that's it. You can just move your move your tiles all around however you'd wish, rearrange them in any way you would prefer to have them. And so it's pretty easy to do, right? Moving them around. But you can also, and this is one that a lot of people aren't aware of, you can have grouping tile of tiles. Notice that this these two are grouped together on the in the middle, and then these five or six are grouped together on the left. Now, if I wanted to create a new group. I could actually drag this over all the way to the right. You notice a little lighter box appears and I can drop it. So I've actually created a whole new group. Let's say I want to name one of my groups though. Uh, I can just simply right click on one of the tiles and notice that these little boxes appear at the top. 
So we'll say this main menu, and then we'll go here and say tools. And we'll go here and say other. And then just click outside the box, and you have official names to all of your grouping. Another great feature of grouping is a lot of people are like, well, can I just move the entire group? Yes, you can. If you click this little minus sign in the bottom corner, or if you click the minus on your keyboard, I'm sorry, not the minus, but the Windows key minus on your keyboard, it'll actually zoom out and you can then rearrange your groups any way you wish to have them rearranged. I'll go ahead and move this one into the middle and we'll see what we get. And look, it's that simple. You can move all your groups around and it's really, really, really easy to do. Now, finally, let's go into some other features here we can do. It's pretty bland from a start menu perspective, right? From a start, start, sorry, start screen, right? Let's say I want to add a background here. Pretty easy to do. You have to open your charms bar. For those of you who don't remember, top right corner brings up your charms bar. If you bring your mouse to the top right corner, or you can hold the Windows key and press C, and that'll bring up your charms bar as well. Then you want to click settings, and you want to click personalize. And this brings up a whole slew of options that you have for making your start screen look beautiful. I can do this cool little red thing, which I actually kind of like. I can do this weird pink tweeter thing, which is different. I can do this awesome little robot thing. I'm going to stick with the red one because that is just plain cool. Now, there's another thing you can do here uh, that a lot of people have asked and requested, and that is, how do I get my desktop wallpaper? to be the same as my start screen. And you can do that, you really can. It's, it's not as hard as it looks. But before I show you how to do that, let's go ahead and go to one of these options here. Let's, let's go ahead and choose the red, but look, you can change your accent color as well. Another great feature of this is you can actually go in and customize exactly how it looks as well. Just kinda of wanna throw that out there before we move into the next part. Now in order to get your desktop wallpaper, notice mine is this yellow one, in order to get that to be the same as your start screen, you want to search for something called navigation. I know it's weird. It's a weird thing to randomly search for. But what you want to do is choose navigation properties. And it'll bring up on your traditional desktop this nice little selection here. And you need to, on the start screen, choose show my desktop background as start. And I click apply, select OK, bring it back up, and oh, there it is it actually dissolves it into the background. Personally, I prefer this because it makes it feel more seamless between my traditional desktop and my start menu. It's like a nice little hover card, right? It's, it's kind of a cooler way to do it in my opinion. Now there's a couple other things we're gonna do here real quick, very, very easy to do. And you can resize these tiles. Let's say I really love my calculator. So I'm gonna right click on my calculator and say, I need this sucker to be smaller. Okay, apparently that one can't get bigger. That's as big as it can get, which is unfortunate. So I can go medium, or I can go really tiny. I can basically decide how I want to size it. Let's try Internet Explorer. Let's right click on it and click resize. This one again can only even be medium or small. But let's try traditional desktop. Right click, resize. This one has the option to be large, wide, medium, or small. Large makes it into a much bigger box, obviously. Resizing it all the way down to a tiny little box. It's really up to you. And again, these can all be drug around however you'd like them. I am, of course, going to leave that at wide because I think that's a good selection for that. So that's all there is to this video. That's how you completely customize your start experience on your start screen. Remember, it's not a start menu. I know I said it 10 times during this video, but it's just a start screen. It's not a start menu. Uh, but the start screen is once you kind of get in there and custom tailor it to your needs, it's actually uh, it, it's a lot easier to work with especially when you start using grouping and things like that. So thank you guys for stopping by. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, make sure you subscribe because there's plenty more of Windows 8 videos to come. Don't forget to pick up the book, Windows 8.1 Missing Manual. You can get it in the link description below. And if you find value in what I'm doing, help support and grow the show for as little as $2 a month by becoming a patron in the link below. You'll get a slew of benefits as well as helping the show grow into something much better. Thanks again for coming out. I'll see you guys in the next video.